And I'm lying there for time without end, thinking about my fate. And in the back of my mind comes up an image of myself as a child sitting in a Sunday school classroom singing, Jesus loves me. I could hear in my mind, Jesus loves me, la la la. Jesus loves me, la la. And as I recalled myself singing it and heard my, I could hear myself as a child singing it. More important than anything else was that I could feel it in my heart that there was a time in my life when I was young and innocent, when I believed in something good, when I believed in something other than myself, when I believed in someone who was all good, all powerful, who really, really cared about me. And I knew that I wanted that back, that which I had lost, that I'd thrown away, that I'd betrayed. I, want, I wanted that back. That I didn't know Jesus, but I wanted to know Jesus. I didn't know his love, but I wanted to know his love. I didn't, I didn't know if he was real, but I wanted him to be real. You know, I mean, it was, it was all just because I trusted that there was a time in my life that I had believed in something and that um, I knew, I had known once as a child that it was true and I wanted to trust that it was true. So I called out Jesus, into the darkness, Jesus, please save me. Please save me. And he came. He came. First there was a tiny little speck of light in the darkness and very rapidly got bright. And the light became so bright that um, if it were in this world, it would have, it would have consumed me. I, it, I just would have fried me to a crisp. But it wasn't at all hot or dangerous there. The light just came upon me. And he reached down. He was in this light. And he reached down out of this light and gently started to pick me up. And in his light, I could see that I was gore and filth and wounds all over. And I, was, I looked like roadkill. And he's gently putting his hands underneath me and, and very tenderly picking me up. And as he's touching me, everything just goes away. All the wounds, all the pain, all the dirt, just, just kind of like um, evaporated away. And I'm like whole and healed. And inside, uh, just filled with his love, which I wish I could be more articulate about. It's so frustrating not being able to tell people about it because, you know, it's the best thing that ever happened to me in my life. I mean, it's, it's like the, it's the everything. You know, it's the all of, of life is to know that love. And, you know, I get to it and I just can't describe it. I can't convey it to you. So he's holding me and embracing me, rubbing my back like a father would his son, like a mother would her daughter, just gently rubbing my back. And I'm bawling like a baby, out of happiness. I mean, like the, the, the release, the, you know, having been lost and now been found, having been dead and now brought back to life, you know. And he's carrying me out of there. Up, we just go. Out, go on. And we're moving towards a world of light. And uh, I began to have thoughts of tremendous shame that I've been so bad. I'm so, I'm, I thought of myself as dirt, garbage, filth. And I thought to myself, he's made a mistake. I don't belong here. He doesn't want me. You know, it's like the shame. Like, how could he, how could he care about me? You know, why me? Um, I'm bad. And we stopped. We weren't in hell. We weren't in heaven. We were in between. And we stopped. 
and he said, we don't make mistakes, you belong here. And we began to converse, and he was talking and telling me things, and he brought over some angels, and we went over my life from beginning to end. And what they wanted to show me in my life was what I had done right and what I had done wrong. And without going through my whole life story, it was real simple, real simple. When I had been a loving, kind person, considerate of other people, it made the angels happy, it made Jesus happy, and they let me know that it made God happy. And when I had um, been selfish and manipulative, it made the angels unhappy, it made Jesus unhappy, and they let me know that it made God unhappy. Uh, what they were trying to convey to me in a nutshell was my whole purpose of my existence had been to love God love my neighbor as myself that's why I had been created that's what I was in this world to um, do, <coughs> to do and to learn and I had failed they told me that I had to come back to this world and I got real upset because I wanted to go to heaven. What they told me about heaven, it's like the most fun, most interesting. I mean, it's the most wonderful place. You, I mean, everybody, every, everybody would want, you know, want to go to heaven, and I wanted to get there. And they said that I wasn't ready, I wasn't fit, that it wasn't my time to go to heaven. It was my time to come back to this world and try and live the way that God wanted me to live, the way God had created me to live in the first place. I told them. Jesus and the angels that I couldn't live in this world without them. And I said that I would have, my heart would break to send me back to this world. Because they were, they'd be there and I'd be here. And they said to me, you, you don't get, you don't get it? What is the matter? We were trying to, we were showing you all this, we were explaining to you, we've always been there. We're all, we always have been there. We've always been with you all this time. And don't, you've never been alone down there? And I said, you've got, to, you've got to let me know that you're around once in a while. So they said, if I prayed and confessed my sins to God, and gave, gave what I had, and, and they meant, what they meant by what I had was gave my worries, my cares, my hopes, my dreams, just gave it all up to God. That there would be times when they would be there and I would know in my heart that they were there. I wouldn't necessarily see them or hear them, but I would, I would, I would feel the love like I'd felt it then. And I said, if you will assure me that there are times when I can know that love I could live in this world and I said that they would do that and with that they sent me back after the experience the uh, nurse who had been in the room a few minutes before and said they couldn't find a doctor and they tried to get one the next time she came running back to the room and she said a doctor's arrived at the hospital which was like this is all pretty miraculous stuff because this is now like um, 9.30 at night around 9, 9.30 at night she said, doctors arrived at the hospital and we're going to have, um, do surgery on you right away. And some orderlies and people came in and they threw my wife out of the room. Um, and it's very disturbing because I was trying to tell them and I wanted to tell my wife what had happened to me. So when um, I passed my wife in the hall on the gurney on the way to the surgery, um, I said, everything's going to be great. And she just started bawling because she thought like that was like a dying man, you know. <laughs> you know? strange thing about the experience is the memory hasn't dulled at all. It's real intense, um, and I don't know, it stays intense. And I believe that one of the reasons that God gave me this experience so that I would have an opportunity to share it with someone, I don't know who, I never know who, but I would have the opportunity to share it with somebody so that it could be of help to them.